All right, guys, Automated Garage back today. We're working on this nice 2015 F-250 with the 6.7, has the dreaded CP4 on it still. And you can guess what we're about to do to it, is yank that thing out and replace it, along with the injectors, return lines, all that fun stuff, dropping the tank, cleaning it. Stick with me here, I'm gonna turn you around. I'm gonna uh, briefly go over where we're gonna start at, and I'm gonna do some time lapse on the basic stuff and try to hit all the high points. So, let's get started. Um, the basics of where we're starting here is we gotta take coolant lines off, we gotta take air intakes off, go on and get the fuel filter and the lines out of the way, undo the trans dipstick, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll touch on those points after I yank all that off, so I'm gonna put you on time lapse for all that. And we're gonna pick up when we get to the point of removing upper intake, removing lower intake, all that kind of stuff. Because if this basic stuff, if you have issues with that, then you definitely shouldn't be doing this whole entire system. So let me get started and I'll catch up with y'all then. Upper intake is off. Now is the time that you need to stuff something and all your holes already stuffed something in the turbo earlier because you don't want to drop anything down to any of this. It causes you a lot of heartache. Um, anyways, it's easier to show you on the intake here what all is involved with it. All of them are eights, except for this one right here is a 10, it's a stud. That's for your dipstick and all that stuff over there on the right hand side. Um, easy to get to, easy to get to, not too bad, pretty hard to get to. A little bit difficult to get to. All the rest of them are very easy. And when you take this thing out, you pick up and you turn this way. That gets it over the lower intake and then you can pull the back side out like that. All right, lower intake. Way simpler than the upper. You got one, two, three tens, and you got your clamp back there on your turbo. And it's just as simple as raising it up. I can do this one handed. All right, so what I just did off camera there's your belt tensioner. It's a 3 8 drive, not a half inch. I don't really like why they went to 3 8 on this. But anyways, take that loose, get your belt out. I want to get it all the way out of the way. You got one, two, three, four, five of these 13 millimeters. The one, you can barely see down there. Start with that one from under the truck. Uh, ratchet wrench, or I can even get to it with my Milwaukee ratchet. Back that one out first, and then come up here and get these others at the top. Then this is loose, and you can walk it here out of the way what's holding me one of them must barely be threaded in still pull the bolts all the way out that way it can pivot a little bit and swing because what it was bumping into is the belt tensioner so pull your bolts all the way out and it's a breeze move on here <coughs> set it behind your fan shroud let it lean against the the balancer down there and it's totally out of your way for what you got to get to next all right we're going to take our vacuum pump loose here these little bitty eights All right, take this little 90 loose here, and then you can pull your pump off just like that. As 
So now we have access to our pump gear, which we have to line some dots up before we remove that, which we are not ready to remove it yet. We're gonna come back to this, but now we're ready to have access to that once we get to that point. So now that we have the pump prepped for getting pulled, we gotta start getting our lines off of it. So you have these two clips here at an eight millimeter right in the middle. So we gotta undo that. You have a sensor here to unplug. It also has this Christmas tree right here. Pull that out. Um, I'm gonna go on and unbolt this here in just a second. Your oil fill, I'm going to get that out of the way. It's gonna make dealing with all these lines a lot easier. Um, you have this connection here, this connection here, and then the braided line right there goes down to your fuel log there. We gotta undo that and then this whole line can come off and we can get it out of our way. You gotta undo the line on each side of the pump here and then the crossover line that goes to the passenger side here. We gotta undo this so we can have enough room to get the pump out. Yes, all that stuff's gonna come out, but right now we're just going after one thing, tackling, getting the pump out and having that portion done. Then we'll move on to our lines and our injectors and all that. So I'm gonna get this undone and I'll show you doing that. All right, so I'm doing these. I just take this little flathead and I work it back. Just like so. Same thing over here. And then we undo our eight millimeter. All right, we undid our eight millimeter there on top of the pump. We undid our hose connections, all very self-explanatory, easy hose connections. Uh, the best thing I could say on the, the return on the back, back there, uh, where you're undoing it from the long, you can spin it and swivel it, spin it around where the two prongs are facing you, squeeze and push, and it, that's the easiest way to undo that one. So now we're gonna work this dude out of here. It's probably gonna require my two hands. Oh, the other thing I didn't show, mention earlier, you have two eight millimeter hold downs for this line right here. Uh, so yeah, you gotta undo those two. All right, the two lines on the back of your pump are 19 millimeter. We're gonna get both of these work loose. And then we're gonna, we gotta undo that eight. You're gonna follow your lines up here. You're gonna undo this eight. Come over here, undo this one. We're gonna start getting our lines all undone. We gotta get our EGR cooler out of the way so we can have access to the other side. Now you are gonna access some through the fender well, but access is limited. So we're gonna get this out of the way, um, starting with getting this line right here. You got an eight millimeter right there. Comes up, disconnect here, come over, disconnect here. That gets that whole line out of the way. And then it's a matter of undoing these bolts I've already done here. I'm gonna try something I haven't done before. I'm gonna see if I can't squeeze the EGR cooler out without undoing that portion because those bolts are prone to break if you're not real careful. So anyways, let me get busy with that. All right, EGR is out of the way. Now we can move back to our pump, mainly because of this line we had to get off. Um, so we're gonna go on and pull the eight that's there. I've already got this one out here. I believe that's it. We're gonna disconnect it from the tube here, log, whatever you'll call it. Get these both out of our way right here behind the pump. We want to get this bracket loose and those out. Then we can undo our pump, our bolts that hold the pump in. Well, first we can bust our nut loose on the gear, then take the bolts out for the pump and get our pump out of the way. So let me get these lines out of the way and we'll catch up when we start removing the pump. All right, we got all our lines off. This is your crossover that goes as the log on this side over here. These two go to your pump and then all three of them come right over here to the log right there where those three are, the driver's side log. So now we got that off, so now we are free to get our bolts undone on the back of the pump, undo our gear and get the pump up. All right, we got our inch and a 16th socket. We got our teeth lined up and all it takes is a bump to break it loose. We're gonna verify that our mark stay lined up. All right, if you see right here, on the back of the pump, you have this bracket. We gotta take these eights out and then we can gain access to our bolts that hold the pump in. All right, we got our three bolts, if that's what you want to call them, that uh, take the pump out. They go on to actual studs that the, the pump slides in on down there. But anyways, the 13 millimeters, we got all those out. All right, so your pump has that dimple right there in the end of it. So what we're gonna do is 
take one of our drip pins, you know, write them in and just give it a bump with the hammer. That doesn't mess the snout of the pump up. If for some reason you were doing this and not replacing the pump, but uh, we still don't want to mess it up. So we're going to bump that out. That'll get the pump loose. All right, we got our pump pump loose. There's our gear. Now you can see our Mars clear as day that you line up there. This is where your vacuum pump rides in these two slots. You now grab your pump and slide it out. And here's your problem maker. So here's all of our stuff here laid out. All of our new sin lines, uh, our crossover line, the three that we just took off a minute ago that I showed you right there. New pump, new injectors, new driver side log, new passenger side log. It's got our sensors in it. Injector lines, bolts for the injectors, new return line, new fuel filter. And what's funny is he actually had this from SNS Diesel before this even happened. It was sitting in this box though, not on the truck. So we're getting to replace all of it instead of just the pump. Otherwise we'd be going back together right now. So now we're gonna get up there and start taking our return lines off, get those out of the way so that we can get to all our injector lines real easy. And uh, hopefully we'll have it apart here soon and get put it back together. So on our return lines, we'll start here. You raise this portion up, you push this portion down, and you pull it apart. And on all your return lines right here, get right at the bottom here and this whole thing slides up just like that and you so you release all of those that way and then the rest of it's just a matter of taking note of how they route so I'm gonna get this return line all off then we'll unplug our injectors we'll start undoing our injector lines all right we got our return lines off and the only thing I did that I didn't show you all was I went on and took the crankcase filter recirculator whatever you'll call it off and uh, very simple there's a bolt right here, and there's two bolts back there, three all together. It goes in here with the O-ring, goes in there with the O-ring. Um, something that I like to do that I've done on a whole bunch of these is the uh, smelting diesel crankcase vent relocate. Let's it vent under the truck. There's mixed thoughts on doing that, but I like doing it. It's one more thing that cleans up the engine bay, along with getting rid of this giant brick right here. So, just food for thought. All right, we're going to get all of our... The line's loose from both the logs now, and then we'll pull our logs off, and then we'll be down to pulling injectors up. All right, on your injector plugs, you have the red lock tab here. Make sure you slide it up, then squeeze and pull off. Don't pull by the wires. Uh, so get that all undone. Get every single one of those, and then you can start attacking your lines. That's where I'm at now. I'm going to finish unplugging them. I'm going to get all these undone. As mentioned, 17 millimeter does all your lines and then uh, we'll be free to start pulling the logs off and then we'll be ready to pull injectors on. All right, we undid all of our lines from the top of the injectors after we unplugged the injectors. I uh, did the two 13 millimeter bolts on each rail. So now you can just take it and bring both of them all the way out. And then you can take your new rails and you can lay your lines out. Don't go on and tighten them up, but you can go and put your lines on here just finger tight get them in there and then get everything right. It makes it a little bit easier for laying that out. And here's the driver's side. So there you have both your logs. And it's late, I'm probably gonna wrap this up for tonight. We'll pick up in the morning with pulling the uh, injectors out. And then we'll start throwing stuff back together. We'll get everything done on the motor. And then the next thing will be, we gotta flush the lines, drop the tank, clean the tank, change the fuel conditioner, change the lift pump. All that stuff will happen after we get all this together. We'll move it over here to the lift bay uh, with the Rhino. We're not gonna crank it, of course. We'll move it over here and we'll flush all the lines. So before I quit for the day, I wanted to go on and show y'all how you check this, diagnosing this. Now we checked it with the computer, the scanner, and knew that, that this was more than likely what we were going after, but you got two T20s that hold this in here one-handed shit but you can see what we have there is a pump that totally shit them in it just looks like glitter everywhere so that's how you go after diagnosing that which would basically involve taking your upper intake off 
Well, basically what we did to get down to the pump to begin getting access to 100% know if you don't have a scanner and you don't have a way to check the stuff, uh, go down here, pull this, and that'll tell you if this is what you got to go after or not. So that's that. All right, so I thought I would show you all real quick. There is a special tool for this, but get your injector out because it's in there pretty tight. So this is your injector hold down. Normally goes this way. We're going to flip it over. Just go underneath the injector. We're not going to beat on it. I'm going to take the wooden handle of one of my hammers right here then tap on it with the other and you'll see it'll raise the injector up just like that. Just like that, you got it out then. Alright, pulling our injectors out. Nothing special to it. Other than Make sure your copper washer comes out with it. Make sure your O-ring, which I've never seen that not do that, but make sure your O-ring's there, make sure your copper's there. Um, we're gonna brush out, and I, so what I do is I run a brush through the bore. I hit it with just a tiny shot, a brake cleaner, and then I blow some compressed air in there. We make sure our bore is clean. What I actually do then is take my camera, I take a look at each bore just to make sure there's nothing laying in there, no trash, because you want these to seal up. So uh, let me get all these out and we'll get to that point. So I literally just cut the camera off and look what did not come out of cylinder one right here. So I cut the camera and I pulled that one. And of course, it's not on there. Let me see if I can get y'all a shot of it. You can see it down there in the bottom. Can't get the light just right. You can see the copper. So we need to get that out of there. So here is the brush I use. The handle's a little inconvenient, but I, you can bend this handle up and make it go where you need it to go and straighten it back out later. But I have a whole set of engine brushes just for cleaning. So we got it out. Um, what I usually do when this does happen, which this is rare that it comes off, please. When you force this brush down there, twist it. You can see the, the twisting part of the metal on here. Just twist it and it'll end up grabbing a hold of that washer, pull it up real easy and it pulled the washer right out with it. So we'll finish cleaning all these bores. Like I said, we're gonna blow it out, hit it with just a touch of brake cleaner, not much. You don't wanna fill the cylinders up or nothing. Just a shot will evaporate no sooner than you put it in there. So that's all we're going for. That's what we're going for right there. So we're ready to start putting our injectors in. So what you have to do is this number right here is very important. That's gotta be programmed into the computer after you put all these into the truck. That's the fuel and tables, percentages, everything else for this injector. So you do it one of two ways. What I like to do is I take a picture. So I start on cylinder one, I install my injectors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I take a picture of each one before I go in. They're in chronological order on my phone. When I go to program them in later, all I gotta do is look through the pictures and put the number in. Or you can write them down whatever way you want to do it, but they got to be kept track of and you need to make sure you have the right ones for the right cylinder. So the only other thing I do for installing these, of course, make sure you take your plastic cap off. You'll find out if you don't. Make sure the copper washer stays on. And I like to smear just a little bit of grease on this O-ring and then I'll slide it down. We'll put our uh, injector retainer on, put our bolt in. You tighten to 22 foot pounds and then you go 90 degrees. That's how you torque these. So let me get busy putting these in and we'll catch up. All right, we got our plastic cap off. We got our copper washer that is on there. And that's just, like I said, I put a small amount of grease right there in that O-ring. So 
Slide your injector in. Slide your hole nut on. With your new bolt. Get it hand started and move on to your next one. All right, so we have all the injectors torqued to 22 foot pounds. Double checked them. Uh, made one more pass after we did that. So now you go 90 degrees. So what I usually do, just take a regular ratchet because it's easier to fit in here than a torque wrench, at least mine is. And you just take note of what about 90 degrees would be. And you go on around and you go to 90 degrees just like that. We have all of our lines hooked up on both of our fuel logs. We just looked at the old ones, just made sure we placed them right. There's no rocket science to it. So now we're going to put these back on. We're going to get everything hand tightened up and then we're going to torque these down to their torque. All right, we got both of our fuel logs sitting in here on each side. The lines are just, you can see you can move them around on each one of them. The bolts are just loosely started in there. So now we're going to work on getting all of our lines started. We're going to get them barely snugged up with our fingers. We're going to go and tighten up the bolts for the logs, and we're going to torque our lines down. And another thing worth noting here is keep all your little covers on everything until you're ready to put each fitting on. It keeps dust, dirt, whatever from getting out of this because you don't want any contamination in the system. All right, this next part, don't take it at face value because there's differentiating specs on it depending on where you look. So what I do is hand tighten all the lines. Make sure your thing is seated, lined up, hand tight. And then you do 177 inch pounds, rail injector, rail injector, rail injector, and then you go 26 foot pounds. So now there is a tool that Matco makes. I don't remember the number offhand, but I just use a crow's foot and in my inch pound wrench. Like I said, 177 inch pounds. I'm not gonna be able to do it while I hold the camera here, but you just kind of got to work your crow's foot in here. You get a little bit of a turn or in it another way. Go 177 inch pounds on everything and then 26 foot pounds. All right, we're all to 177 inch pounds. I'm gonna to torque to 26. I wanted to add one more thing. If you talk to a tech in Ford, what they're gonna say nine times out of 10 is, oh, I, just, I know how it's supposed to feel and they go by feel on this. So do what you want, look it up. I try to, to make things right because you don't want this to leak. This is extremely high pressure. If for some reason you do think you have a leak once you put this together, don't put your hand by it. This is such high pressure, it'll force the diesel fuel under your skin and cause you a nice trip to the emergency room. Um, anyways, so just do what you want on that. I'm just telling you what I do. All right, logs are tightened down, injectors are tightened down, lines are tightened down. So we're all done on that. So now we're gonna put our return line back in. This is where you may wanna refer back to a picture you took. However, you got all these little hold downs where it routes. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a matter of running it nice and neat. So uh, let me get busy doing that. I'll show you after I get it on and I'll show you locking one of those on also. All right, we got our return lines run as far as identifying which side is what. Remember, you have this connection that's gonna go right here, but we are not connecting that yet because we gotta flush our lines before we hook all that back up when we drop the tank and clean the tank out. Um, this side here has this one Y that comes off of it, goes to the very first one here. I left one unconnected so y'all could see connecting one. You should hear a little definitive click just like that, make sure it's seated, push that down, just like that. And that's all there is to it. So this is why we timed our pump when we lined our marks up on our gears right there. Because if you look, there's a slot in there. It's for the pin that's on the shaft right here. So if you look at the orientation of that pin on the old one where we timed it, look at the orientation of the one on this one, they should be exactly the same. So now we're gonna stick our pump in, or cut this tag off first, stick our pump in and put our bolts on there and uh, get ready to torque that. And then we can slide our gear on. Everything should slide right back on. Now this is a helical gear, so take note of that when you slide it on, they're not just straight cut gear. And uh, then we'll torque the pump and torque our nut. All right, so pump is getting ready to go in. As you can see, you got your studs right there. Very self-explanatory for sliding it in. So I'm gonna set camera down we'll get the pump put in get the bolts snugged up we'll slide the gear on get the nut on all right so we have all of our studs nuts whatever you want to call it finger tight and if you can see there's just a little bit of a gap 
and you can almost tighten this gap up by hand just by walking them in a little bit like this. But it's easier to put your gear on right now before you walk it all the way in. I'm gonna see if we can't get this on camera here with the mirror. You can see right there, our two marks are lined up. So we know we got it clocked right. And the pump is in far enough for the gear to line up with the pin on the shaft. So I'm gonna steadily snug those bolts up, walk the pump in and make sure my gear stays right where it's supposed to. All right, so basically walking the pump in, I basically just went side to side on the two side ones, just went a little back and forth, walked the pump in even, and then tightened the bottom one up, snugged it up at the end. Show you our gear one more time down here. You can see that our marks are still lined up perfect and our gears are best right, so we're good to go on that. So now we're gonna put our nut on and torque it. One thing I didn't show y'all is uh, I spared a little bit of that grease on the O-ring that's on the uh, collar where the shaft comes out of the high pressure pump. So lubricate that up before you put it in. But uh, we're torquing this now, 18 foot pounds. There is no torque sequence for it. You just go 18 foot pounds. Now we're torquing our nut to 59 foot pounds. This is going to turn just a little bit, but you should be able to achieve the torque. And I had already tightened up a little bit before I started video on here, but we are at 59 right there. All right, so now is the perfect time to install our SNS bypass kit. We've taken our T25s out, holding our FCA in. We want to keep it clean, and that's how one's supposed to look. Not covered in metal, of course. We got our SNS bypass. Got our O-rings on it. Got some grease on it so the O-rings don't come out. It goes right down in there. FCA goes back in. It's got two uh, brand new torques. Sorry, Allens, four millimeter Allens. We'll put those in and we're gonna torque them here in a minute. Let me get all that started. All right, that's all we're doing with the SNS for now. We're gonna continue our regular installation of the rest of the stuff here, which we're starting back with the big, long three lines. We've got our crossover line and the lines that go to our high pressure fuel pump here. So now let's get busy putting this on. What we gotta do first is put this back on that we showed taking off the pump earlier that goes in the back of those uh, spacers is what they call them in the instruction manual actually, but it's kind of a bolt. But anyways, we're gonna put this on first and then we'll be able to mount these hoses up. All right, we got all our lines hooked up, torqued. We got all our eight millimeters back and all of our hold down spots. All that's good to go. Lines are tightened up on the back of the pump. Torque those also. Now, we're gonna put our line back on the turbo that we took off to get these lines out. We're gonna do that before I forget it. And then we can move on to the supply lines here to go to the pump. All right, we got our supply lines all run torque down onto the pump here, run it over. Uh, like I said, we're not hooking any of this up right now because I got to flush the lines, but we're trying to get the motor all back together right now. Um, I think what I'm going to jump on now is we're going to throw the vacuum pump back in. We got a new gasket for that. Get that bolted in, torque down to 89 inch pounds, get the whole fan assembly back on, get the belt back on. Uh, roll with that. I have the notorious broke off bolt right here. I got to deal with. So I think I'm going to get this together deal with that bolt and probably wrap it up for the day and then the next day i jump on this we're going to work on moving over to the lift and getting ready to drop the tank and flush the lines all right vacuum pump is on you got your four eight millimeters 89 inch pounds make sure you put the new gasket on and make sure you torque 89 inch pounds these are notorious for leaking because they weren't torqued correctly from the factory on a lot of these earlier six sevens so do that we're going to put our fan assembly back on and work on the belt now i can plug this little vacuum line back up right here and uh, yeah, we'll keep moving on. All right, so we are at the point now, putting our lower intake on, putting our upper intake on, reconnecting all of our coolant hoses, radiator hoses. I got to finish mounting the SNS diesel disaster prevention kit because we only did the part that has to be done before we put the rest together where it goes into the top of the pump there. So uh, let me get busy with all that. I pressure washed my parts the other day and got that cleaned up before we put it back on. It's all pretty self-explanatory. I may do a little, uh, clips here and there talking about a couple things but other than that this is straightforward the hard part 
is over other than getting it on the lift and uh, cleaning the tank and the lines and replacing the lower filter and all that. So let me get busy with this. All right, we're all back together other than hooking our fuel lines up here because we're now gonna move it over here to the lift, drop the tank, clean the tank. We gotta change our lower fuel filter. We gotta flush all the lines and then we'll hook up to that new upper fuel filter that I put here. We'll finish our SNS diesel uh, disaster prevention kit and uh, that'll be it. Uh, I don't know if I showed y'all before, but that's the smelting diesel uh, CCV reroute kit that we did back there. Um, I don't know what's going on over here. I feel like there's something missing, but yeah, that's the way, uh, that's the way he asked me to do that. So anyways, uh, I'll catch up with y'all when this thing's up in there. We got Troy back at the shop today. Hi. So we got the 6-7 over here in the lift bay. We got our fuel pump commanded on. I'm gonna take you out here and show you what we're doing. So we're pumping our tank empty. That's our send from the tank. What I did was I took the old fuel filter, upper fuel filter was up here and I cut the inlet and the outlet off of it. So that's what's in there with that clear hose hooked to it. We're filling our cans up here to pump it out. So then we're gonna drop our tank, clean our tank, and then after that, I'm gonna take both of these, hook them together with a short piece of hose, hook the sin to the return. Don't hook the return to the tank. And we're gonna pump the clean diesel fuel when we put the tank back together, uh, all cleaned out that way. And that's gonna flush all of our lines that way. We'll just waste a gallon or two of getting diesel flushing them out. All right, we pumped our tank empty for the most part. Uh, all the fuel coming out was aerated now. So I'm assuming we're at the very end of the tank, maybe a gallon or so left in it. We've undone our filler neck so far. 3.8 millimeters right there. So we're gonna jack the truck up now. We're gonna start figuring out about uh, unhooking the filler neck, undoing the tank straps, getting the tank down so we can unhook everything, get the tank out here and clean it up. All right, tank is coming down. Ratchet strap method works pretty good to uh, fix it where you're not trying to hold stuff the whole time. Filler neck is off. Just slid it out. They're both already over the frame up there. Got one electrical connector right here, has a red locking tab, slide it over, push it, slide it off. You got your two hose connections here. We're gonna undo those, then we'll be free and clear to drop the tank down. Uh, we're gonna leave the vent hose and the filler hose on the tank. So this is why you have to drop the tank. You can see all that pretty glistening metal down in there. No, I'm not emotionally attached to that rag. <laughs> and then you can see here in the lift pump, or the in tank sending unit here, I mean, you can see the metal all down in there. So this was our last pump out of the tank when we were emptying the tank. This has nothing in it. So that's why what I do is clean the tank, clean the sending unit, and then we put all this back together, put brand new fresh diesel in it, and then pump that through the system. You just waste some gallons of diesel pumping it through the system. Start with the old filter that's in there and then change it to the new filter and then pump it all through there before you hook anything up to the motor and flush all that out. So I'm gonna get busy uh, getting the rest of this out, pressure washing all this, letting it dry in the sun. That's the last little bit of residual. I think put it upside down on this bed now. We'll let the sun just beat on it and dry it.
All right, we got our tank all clean. Y'all saw me pressure wash that earlier and then it sat out in the heat and the sun for about three hours and dried any moisture that was left in it out. Cleaned the sending unit all up, uh, pressure washed the outside of the tank, got all the crap off of it. So now we're ready to drop that back in, put our cap back on, seal that back up. I'm gonna put this back in the truck, have it hanging from our ratchet straps there, have it up just high enough to make all my connections except for the return line. I got five gallons of fresh diesel that we went and picked up. We're gonna put five gallons in here. I'm gonna hook the send and return line together up there under the engine bay, have it pump through the system and back out that return. And I'm gonna pump about two gallons out and flush the system really good. I'm gonna change that fuel filter on the frame rail before I do that. And we're gonna change the fuel cooler that's on the frame also. Uh, I got a brand new one in the box there. So we're gonna change those out and then flush the system and that should have everything good to go. All right, we got our tank hanging by the ratchet straps. We got our supply line hooked up. We got our sending unit hooked up. And uh, I'm gonna pump some fuel into there with that same pump. Y'all saw me cleaning the tank out. Yes, I flushed the pump before I reuse it again um, because I can't hook the filler neck up yet. So I'm just gonna stick a hose up in there. That'll get my five gallons in here to pump it up through our filter here that we're changing out right now new gasket clean all this out with brake cleaner blew it out with air compressor we're going to come up here we're going to take our fuel cooler off this right here so we're going to disconnect all that new fuel cooler there then we'll uh flush everything i'm going to connect the supply and return up there it's going to return all the way back to where the return is disconnected right there i'm going to catch it in a jar uh probably going to do about a gallon and a half two gallons through the system turning the key on and off, uh, kind of oscillating the system and that'll flush anything out that's in there. Um, and we're bypassing, by connecting those up there on the top, we're bypassing our new filter that's up there on the motor without using it yet. So it'll still be a brand new fresh filter. We'll run this for a short bit after we crank it up and I'm gonna change this filter again and then we should be good to go. So uh, let me get busy changing this cooler. It's just, three bolts right here three nuts sorry one two three you get two hose clamp connections and you got two quick connect connections all right we got our new fuel cooler on all reconnecting i'm getting ready to throw the new filter in now like i said i'm gonna get up top and i'll show you all how i connect those two the supply and the return together to make a loop on the system with the return disconnected back here and we'll flush all this out all right, we got a little over five gallons of fresh diesel in our tank. That's the two pieces I cut off of an old filter cut right here. Adapted those together. Got the supply and return hooked together to make a loop. Return is disconnected from the tank once again. Uh, sometimes this drips some, so I got to pay in here to catch some. Um, I have somebody get in the truck, turn the key on and off. We're going to run at least a gallon through the system and uh, see how it looks and go from there. All right, so I got somebody turning the key on. Yeah, turn it on. Stop. So we're filling that up, dumping it out every time. We're gonna do that till we get a gallon. All right, we're knocking out a quick oil change before we set it down on the ground. Um, everything is back together under the truck other than that. Tank's all strapped back up, everything's connected. We cleaned our diesel fuel off of everything. So we're gonna finish this oil change up, set her down. We'll be ready to connect our lines and finish our s, &S disaster prevention kit up there. And then she'll be ready to fire up. All right, we're filling up our oil. We gotta fill up our coolant. Uh, we finished installing our s, &S disaster prevention kit there. As you can see, uh, very self-explanatory. Instructions are great. Um, Another one of those companies that actually makes good quality instructions for you to use. Uh, very straightforward on that. So once I get done putting a little coolant in it, we're gonna get in here, 
turn the ignition on and we got to program all the new injector flow rates into the PCM and uh, then we'll be able to crank it up. All right, we have entered all our new injector flow rates here. They are programmed into the PCM now. I'm gonna prime the fuel system a couple more times, key on, key off, uh, just to make sure we got everything primed up good. We're gonna crank this dude up. All right, here we go. Priming one last time, we're gonna give her a crank. I'm gonna let this run for just a minute. I'm gonna check everything, check my coolant levels, turn it off, double check the oil and everything else. I'm gonna drive this straight to the gas station a couple miles around the corner, put some fuel in this because we only put a little over five gallons in it and we flushed about a gallon or so through the system. So we don't have a whole lot in the tank. We got her all together. She's running great. Been driving her for about 20 minutes. We're gonna give her a rip here where we always do our little quarter mile test run here. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video on doing this complete fuel system on this 6.7 Power Stroke. Uh, this mainly applies for the 11 through 16. There's some subtle differences, uh, 17 and up, but it's pretty much the same thing still. Um, anyways, make sure you put quality fuel in your truck. Use a fuel additive. Use Arch Oil. That's a, a quality product there. Uh, that helps prevent some of this. Find a good place to buy diesel fuel from. Make sure it's not contaminated. It doesn't have water or something like that because that is the ultimate enemy of this CP4 pump. So look out for that. DCR has a new pump out for these. I'd love to get my hand on one and make a video on one of those. It sounds like the, the ultimate thing that's gonna make these six sevens reliable in ditching that CP4 pump that causes so many problems. If you don't have the disaster prevention kit, get it. <clears throat> that way your pump goes out. At least you're not doing everything that we just did to this one, the complete thing. So anyways, y'all check out our channel. We got a whole lot of Power Stroke forward content on the channel here, coming stuff on occasion. Probably going to be featuring this on the channel here soon. That's my original truck, first truck ever that dad bought me back in the day. Uh, we just threw a starter on it today, cleaned it up. Uh, carburetor's a little junked up. I threw some stuff in the tank. We'll see if it works. Otherwise, I may be doing a carb rebuild. We're going to do a straight axle swap on this 85 Bronco here. So that'll be coming up on the channel also. If this video was helpful to you, please go to our Venmo uh, if you feel like it. Give whatever donation you feel like giving. If it saved you some money, showed you how to do this yourself, kept you from going to a shop, maybe a shop that's not trustworthy, whatever, we'd love to get a donation from you. It helps produce more content on this channel and bring more stuff to help you out on your forward and your power stroke and well, whatever else we feature on here. So it's Automatic Garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. We've got a whole lot more stuff coming. Y'all stick with us. We've got some major changes coming to the shop here in the next week or so. We'll catch up with that then, so we'll holler at y'all later.